Alright, so we are at a boiler. Uh, it's a steam boiler. And basically, the complaint was that they're not getting, um, they're not getting any heat. So, right now, this is a landlord tenant situation. So, basically, landlord tenant situations don't, they're not the best like scenario because landlord usually they're very you know so um they want the bare minimum most of the time um so right now in this particular boiler it looks like the looks like the pylon went out so we're gonna check that out real quick and then fire up the boiler and make sure that everything's fine but the they're split into two different systems the first floor system over there we have the second floor system over here actually i'm sorry first floor system is this one and that's the second floor that's a newer um, slant fin boiler over there. This is a Penco cast iron boiler. Um, it's a natural gas boiler. Uh, model six, model number 1604 HSD series three. We have a automatic water feeder on the boiler. It's 24 volts. It's got a low water cutoff which obviously it is currently not on. So we know that there's plenty of water in the boiler. Um, she could definitely benefit from a good service. I'm gonna mention that to her. Hopefully she would wanna move with that. So we'll see. But right now, this is the gas valve. This gas valve has a pilot tubing, which is usually this gray pilot tubing right here. And you have this thermocouple uh, tubing right here. This thermocouple tubing is what keeps the solenoid valve open in this gas valve and that solenoid va valve stays open via a small amount of um, electricity that is formed when the flame hits this thermocouple and keeps this little uh, solenoid open inside which will keep a flame uh, over there on so what we're gonna do right now is we're gonna actually take this off if i can change this Look at this. Look at this. Alright, so gotta take this off. Take this off. This thing is very important. If you technicians ever walk around a boiler and you see this jumped out or bypass or something, they took this out, like don't work on that because that's this this switch should always be actively open. So we're gonna check this out real quick just to make sure that switch is fine. Because that is basically a safety rollout switch. You can tell there's a dog on the other side of this door. And I thought he was gonna eat me alive. But he didn't, luckily. All right, so this switch, we're gonna check it out real quick. We're gonna set, turn that off real quick. I just wanna check this switch. This is fine. Just set this. this. Oh, this all this Come on. Okay. All right. So, what we're gonna do here is we are going to check continuity between this point and this point to make sure that this link has not been broken okay because you can see it looks a little bit like black and charred up here so we want to make sure that this link has not been broken and that we still have this switch is still good because this guy basically if it's not good it won't do its job by shutting the burners off during a flame rollout scenario okay and that's when the flames roll back out of the boiler which is not good so we're gonna check that out real quick So we have our meter set up in continuity. Continuity right there, OL on the bottom. 
you can see this right here. Continuity. And you'll see A, B. So we want to have a beep between that switch. Okay, it's going to tell us that the switch is good um, and that it continues its you know continuity essentially its link across the actual you know um across the actual fuse essentially okay we're gonna check the damn mains oh my god so so we gotta go here one leg and then the other side yep yeah, see that we have a beep that's good so that switch is good what we're gonna do now is we're just gonna briefly just put this back in here. Okay, that takes care of that. So now we know that the pilot light is out. So we're going to attempt to relight that real quick. Hopefully we can. And we don't have to change the thermal couple. Yeah, this burn is like pretty rough too. I know it's really hard to tell, but these burners are not just attached to this front piece. Most of the burners attach also in the back. So you want to make sure that you really let, um, check the uh, back to make sure they're sitting correctly. Because if they're not, that's going to cause a problem. Right, so we're going to try to relight this pilot. So what we're going to do on the gas, so we're going to set this to the pilot position. That is going to allow me to depress this valve down. If I'm on the on position, I can't press that down. Okay? It's not okay. So it's got to be in the pilot position. It allows me to depress it down. And what we're going to do now is that we're going to simply turn the pilot back on. So we're going to press down on the red button. Okay. So now turn on the pilot. You see the flame. Now hitting that. Now you usually don't want, don't want to let it go right away. Um, you want to wait a little bit before you let it go because that thermal couple needs to heat up first in order to create that small amount of static electricity to keep that so you want it open on the pilot tubing assembly on the gas valve. So you want to wait a little bit and then slowly release the, bu the uh, red button. Now, when you release the red button, if it doesn't slowly, I mean, all right, so when you start slowly releasing the button, if the pilot does not stay on, okay? you probably have to replace the thermal couple. Um, now we're gonna slowly let go of this and see if we lose it. Okay, I don't lose it, still active. And I've let go of the, um, of the button. So now we're gonna put this back together. Let's see here. Let's 
So now that we've done that, so we got the pilot back on, right? We adjust, we are now going to flip this from pilot to the on position. Okay, so that's on. Okay, that does not mean that this is going to turn on like right away, right? So this gas valve, um, all of these controls you see here, go through a circuit. Okay, um, each control serves a different purpose in this particular boiler. So each control serves a purpose a safety purpose um on this particular boiler so the low water cutoff doesn't allow the water or the boiler to fire if there's no water in the boiler the gas valve um basically turns the gas on and off however there's other um you know like safeties in that in that you know circuit that will obviously shut the boiler off or shut the gas valve off in case those safeties were to trip or break or something was to happen example the switch we tested that's one of them so that'll shut the power off to the uh, gas valve so that's it now so now we're going to flip this on we should be calling for heat where's my tt This is not tripped, is it? Okay. Burner. There's some leaves in there, some stuff in there. I wonder if that's being jammed up right now. Okay, you see how this, this damper is being jammed up right now? Hold on. Um, this is gonna be a good episode, okay? Now, obviously, something was restricting that that damper to turn. And when I look up, right, there are multiple different safety switches that will turn a boiler off as a safety precaution to the boiler. Okay? There is automatic dampers. There's pressure switches. There is flame rollouts. There is uh, draft uh, overheating uh, limits, low water cutoffs. So we'll do that, right? So the first thing that usually kicks on during a call for heat is a, um, a um, damper on a particular boiler, right? The damper will open and close. Um, once it makes that contact, when it opens, it allows the, con the continuation of the cycle for the heat, right? Um, this is the reason why this one didn't open. So um, that right there is the damper. And this guy right here, I'll, I pray that this is not a lie, Phil. I swear to God. Oh, Jesus Christ, I was a dog. Oh, Jesus Christ, I was a dog. Oh, you are dead, bro. You are so dead. Oh, my God. Bro! Like, you just didn't make... Did not make it. Oh, but did I never see it. Alright, well, you're gonna go to the garbage. Um, Cause you just caused these people some money. So I'm pretty sure they don't want you around. Guys, it, it's totally dead. Like, it's just burned up. It's, but yeah. Um, yeah, we're gonna throw you in the garbage later. We're just gonna sit you up right there, buddy. That's right. I haven't seen one of those in a while. Usually you find birds um, and some other stuff. I haven't seen a squirrel in a while. So let's see, what does this guy call? Yeah. So it tried to, it tried to nest on the on the motor. So obviously, that's got some problems. So we're gonna do this. Then 
move this all down. Uh, we're gonna have to take care of that too. Alright, so now this damper turns this. He's got a little swivel here. This damper will turn it on, but let's see if we can clean some of this stuff out of here. So let's see, round two. Check it out. Yeah. See now how it's turning? So that the damper is starting to turn, and right there it just made, and that fired up the boiler. Okay, so let's clean this up a bit more. You really shouldn't feel draft right here because essentially what's happening is the boiler is burning off as it burns off obviously it travels up the heat exchanger goes out through here this portion right here and it goes up up the stack up the chimney so you shouldn't really feel heat right here in this section so let me just show you guys so right here you shouldn't feel heat So now, right now we're gonna wait a, a bit. Um, I'm gonna go upstairs. Yeah, so what we're looking upstairs is actually a, um, a radiator valve. Um, I'm sorry, a vent uh, radiator valve. Not the actual valve that shuts off the uh, radiator, um, you know, like itself. It's the actual steam uh, vent valve. They usually is located on the opposite side of that valve that you shut off. Um, that basically allows the, the air to come out as the steam starts to rise. Um, but that's it's a very common thing that leaks over time, so we just gotta swap it out. Um, but I just want to stay here a bit longer. Oh, look at this! Man. This is the other boiler. This is not the one that I'm working on. This is a slam fin boiler. Yeah. Hmm. 
pretty standard stuff, nothing crazy. They got two water heaters. Oh, I stepped on the desk roll. My bad. All right, so actually, oh, we got some steam building up in this thing already. Let's see. Yeah, we got some steam building up in here. Yeah, nice. So actually, we can go, we can go upstairs. Man, that built up pretty fast. The returns are already, the returns are already fucking hot as anything. There is no, um, I don't see a, uh, I wonder if it's on the other side. Usually there's the main vent. There's the main vent on the return. Uh, let's see. This is, oh, yo, wow, look at that. Yeah, that, that, that ain't doing shit. All right, so let's see here. There's one there, what the fuck? That ain't doing shit either. All right. And that goes there. We're not, we're not building up here quite yet. And the boiler is way oversized if it's actually for that floor over there. They must have split it. So what happens a lot of times when they end up splitting these houses to make them into apartments, they usually like, they'll leave one boiler and then like split the pipes, throw another boiler somewhere else. I mean, yeah, but it is what it is. Yeah, that actually goes that way too. All right, so we, we're actually hitting a couple other red right here. Let's see. This is actually for the other system, but look at that. Yeah, it's not good. You really want to have proper um, venting of the steam system. Um, for steam circulation overall, especially when you're having like these like systems that have been altered, you really don't want to like, you know, you want to make sure that they're working correctly. Uh, okay. That's fine. I'm just going to clean up over here, uh, talk to the landlord, let him know what's going on. Um, and then, um, you know, take it from there. I, I'm going to definitely recommend a couple of things in this boiler, like a, a service, um, probably a pressure relief valve to be changed out. Uh, a treatment system replaces some of the vents and some other stuff that's going on here. But um, you can see actually 86 gallons have gone into this uh, that feeder. That's quite a bit of water. I personally, when I do maintenance and systems, I like to reset those just because like I can see next year how much water it, it took. So like usually like 15 to 20, like not 12 to 15 gallons. It's an average like season, you know, that um, it will go through. Anything higher than that, like if we, you go back the next year and you see like 30, for example, it's usually losing water somewhere. Either you want to check a wet return or maybe, you know, a ready has been leaking or some, some, something's leaking down in the basement or something. I had that problem once a while back. A feeder kept going through a lot of water. Couldn't figure out what was going on and it actually was having a broken wet return in the, in the slab. That wasn't good. Uh, I'm going to clean up over here, let her know what's going on, give her some options and some other stuff, and uh, we're good.